Shout out to Thomas O'Brien on Patreon for 11 months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on my channel. Check out my Patreon in the description What's below. What's up, guys? Quezier Noah here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today, we're in Photoshop, and I'm going to be showing you how to turn logos into kind of three-dimensional patches. Not really three-dimensional, but giving it like a 3D texture uh, and making, making it look like it pops out a little more than a 2D logo would. Now, I use this a lot of times for apparel design that I do in sports jerseys because things like hats, jerseys, jerseys use actual patches as the logos typically. I'm planning on turning this into a little PSD document at some point where you can just download that, upload your logo, and bam, it's a patch. Uh, but that's not ready yet. That will come soon and will be available for a free download down below in the description when it's ready. Don't know when that'll be, but hopefully it's soon. Before we get started though, I wanna ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy or like tutorials like this or videos like this. If we could hit 100 likes on this video, that would be great. Uh, if we hit 100 likes, I'll be sure to get that PSD out for you guys to make this whole process a lot easier for you. So I'm in Photoshop and I'm actually in a hat mockup that will be going to my website templatefc.com if you're into sports mock-up templates and things like that that's where this will be available that's also where the uh, psd download will be available when it's ready uh, but you can see i'm working on the hat mock-up for the baseball mock-up that's coming out soon for the tutorial purposes like we're you're obviously probably not going to be doing something like this so i'm just going to create a new document about 2000 by 2000 pixels is good for this and then create that new document now we want to create a new layer and I like to fill mine. So I'm going to press command delete, which will fill. Um, it's I'm going to press command I so you can actually see it. But you can see we have our layer and then our background layer. And I'm going to call this just logo. And then what we're going to do is right click, convert to smart object, and then double click that, which will open that in its own thing. Um, you guys aren't sure what uh, smart objects are or smart layers. Basically, whatever you add here will be updated to the original document. So if I come here and add these just parallel lines and press command S, when I come back here, it will be updated with that. So that's kind of how the whole thing works. Um, let me delete that. And now we want to go ahead and add our logo. So I've added the Kraken logo. If you guys aren't aware, this is the Seattle Kraken logo, the new hockey team. Um, and I, it, I'm using this because it has different colors and I'm going to be showing you that aspect and then I'm going to be showing you a solid color, just one colored logo and how you can do that. Uh, but here we are with our logo and I like to just simply separate the colors and I just use the magic wand tool. Now the simplest way is to go for what you would like to be on top. So for me that would be the red eye. So I'm going to select that, command C, command V. And then I want all of the blue the lighter blue to be on top next, but it'll be easier just to select the dark blue and command C, command V that. Then uh, I'm gonna command J the original layer, bring it in the middle so the dark blue is behind. Then I'm gonna press command on the dark blue, hold command and shift, click the red, and then on this middle layer, press delete. And I'm gonna further split this up by splitting up the shading of this guy. So let's select the darker blue. I'm gonna press command C, command V, and that should be fine. You also don't have to separate that by color. You could separate it however you wanted. Uh, I just think color is probably the best way because different colors would have different stitching, so it makes sense. Uh, so let's double click on one of these layers and bring up our layer styles. Now I actually have the style saved just so it's a lot easier for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna come in here and click it. I don't want the color fill though. I want everything else. So first things first, you're gonna wanna download this pattern I have which I'll put in the description for you guys to download. Uh, but you wanna download that and I'll get to that in a second. So um, I'll uncheck that for now. And let's go ahead, bevel and emboss first. So you wanna go for an inner bevel of smooth. Uh, you need a bigger depth, mine's just set to 230, but really anything above 200 should be fine. Size, you want to be a five. Um, again, depending on the size of your document, these things might go up and down slightly. Uh, but basically you want it to kind of look like mine. So five is like a pretty good outline of the lighting. Zero soften, we want 90 degrees shading, 30 degrees uh, altitude, just a normal linear gloss. Um, you could mess with that though if you'd like. Screen highlight mode bumped up to 80 and then multiply at 54. And then you want to come to that texture, check that here, and you want to set that scale to 125. 
uh, and a depth of 25. Uh, if you want it to stand out a little more, you could bump up the depth, but as you can see, it gets a little crazy. Then you want to go to inner shading and be sure to uncheck global light here because that can become a pain. Um, and you want the black multiply, which I think are the defaults, but you want to knock it down to 25, negative 90, five distance, zero choke, five size. Again, some of these settings can fluctuate. Uh, and then if you want to be able to change the color at some point, you can add a color overlay and that will let you change the color to anything you want down the line. That's something I'm not going to be using here because the colors are defined. Then you can add a gradient overlay if you'd like. For this one, I don't think I'll have it checked, but basically you just want something like this. You want black to white. And depending, you might want more white or more black. And since this eye is so small, it's not really necessary. So I'm not going to have it checked. But just keep that in mind because we are going to want it checked for like the darker blue one. Finally, we want to drop shadow. But this will, again, be a setting that you can toggle on and off. So for me, I like to go multiply black 76% um, opacity, 90 degrees, uncheck global light again, distance 6 but again, that can fluctuate and that actually fluctuates depending on the part of the logo I'm doing. Um, and, and for this instance, I'm actually not going to have the drop shadow checked. So it's going to be hidden and then that's going to be my settings for this eye. When you're happy with those settings, again, feel free to mess around with them. You click OK, uh, right click copy layer style. And in this case, we're missing some settings. So I'm going to paste it on this one, the second one you can see what we get and then double click and bring back some of these so i want to bring back the gradient and we'll see what the drop shadow looks like we might uncheck that but let's just keep it on and now we have all four settings here so we're going to copy that one right click copy layer style and paste it to the others now you don't really have to paste it to this bottom one because you don't see it because it's not like part there but this is the one I typically want the drop shadow on and then the others I'll uncheck it because it tip the drop shadow you typically only want on one layer. Um, I like to have it on all of them just because it's fun to uncheck and see if it looks better. Um, like in this case, I think I like it on, but this one definitely off. Um, and now you can see we have our patch, which I think looks really good. I think that looks really nice. And then we can actually save that and come over and there we go, we have that on one layer. And now the reason we have the smart object is we wanna be able to add some more modifications to it. Uh, there's a few things we can do, but the one that is universal for all these is adding a little bit of a um, a ring, uh, a wiggle effect, I believe. And that creates the uh, illusion that it's like stitching. Now you don't have to do this, but I think it's pretty cool to mess around with. So I'm gonna duplicate this twice and I'm gonna hide the default one at the top and use these two as wiggles. So I'm going to come into filter or it's ripple. That's what I'm looking for. Distort ripple on this first layer. And this one you can do a hundred or a negative a hundred um, or whatever number works for your document size. So we'll do negative a hundred and then come back in. Do it again, but you want to go positive just so it creates that crisscross effect. And if we zoom in here, you can see along the edges, it's a little more rough. Um, it's a little easier to see here. And let me show you what that looks like when it's not there. You can see it's a little bit smoother. smoother. It's still a little rough, but it's a lot rougher with these ones. And I think it creates a better looking effect. Now, I want to show you what a solid logo would look like. And by solid logo, I mean just a one colored logo. Uh, but you can see we're going to just paste those same layer styles to this. And it doesn't look as interesting. It's a little bit boring. Uh, it still works if we save it and come back. I mean, it still looks fine, but it could be a little better. So the one thing I like to do is duplicate that layer. And I like to duplicate it twice and just leave one at the bottom as a default. But I'm going to press Command, select the thumbnail, go to Select, Modify, Contract. And I'm going to set this to 10 pixels uh, contracting. Uh, and if I click OK, you can see those dancing ants come in a little bit and we have like a little outer edge. So what I'm going to do is on this top layer, I'm going to press delete and then I'm going to select inverse and then go to the layer below and press delete on that one and then press command D to deselect. So now we get this stroke effect going on and uh, you can also mess with the drop shadow again to see which one looks better. Um, so getting rid of the drop shadow on the top one looks a lot better. 
And we could probably get rid of the drop shadow here on this one too, because we have it on the bottom most layer. And now you can see that looks a little more interesting. And actually I want to come in here and add a color overlay of white because this is most uh, famous for being a white logo. And if we save that and come on over, we'll probably have to change the background and let's put it on a blue that looks even better. But for me, I still wanted to add a little bit more to this. So what I ended up doing was going to one of our ripple effects here, one of our ripple logos, and just going to the bevel and emboss and upping the size to kind of create something like this. Yeah, so we add more shadows and then we can mess with the depth. So we can actually crank this up, but we might as well go to a thousand and then mess with the size to do something like that. And I just think that adds even more three-dimensionality to it. Um, this looks more similar to what the hat would look like. And you can actually do this without doing that stroke thing I did. Um, and it would look fine. Uh, since this is a white logo too, the highlight mode doesn't really matter. Like you're not gonna be able to see anything. But the important thing here is the shadow mode. So I wanna tweak this a little bit. And yeah, about 27, click OK. That looks pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with that. If we click that one, you can see the difference. So that adds even more to the patch, and it's so much fun when you have logos that are different colored, like the Kraken one, uh, because you could come in here and mess with different textures. We could even duplicate this dark blue one and add that three-dimensional bevel that I just showed you. And there we go, that's our final look. Uh, be sure to hide your bevel and boss on this logo then, by the way. But that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more. I'll be posting the PSD for this um, so you guys can create them real easy soon. But it will be available for the people on my Patreon sooner, so be sure to check that out if you wanna support me and download a bunch of great stuff. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Quezzy, and follow my Instagram, that's Quezzy. I post a lot of sports-related design stuff, similar to what you saw in this video. Uh, of course, it's more full jersey designs and not just the logo, uh, but be sure to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.